Let's talk about something, something in the recent news. As we're shooting this today, it's just a, a day or two past the American Medical, American Medical Association officially classifying obesity as a disease. What does that do moving forward? Is that a good thing in the long term? Is that a good thing in the long term? I think it opens up possibi the possibility that there will be more funding and there will be more emphasis placed on the obesity epidemic in this country. I think there's the other side of that is the insurance companies are going, whoa, you mean we've got to pay for this now? We're, we're, we're paying for everything else. Now we have to pay for prevention? Jeez, that's, that's just really freaking us out. <laughs> so, but, and I think that's what's going to happen is the insurance companies are going to say, we're not going to pay for this. You mean we have to start paying for, and, and I heard a commentary on this yesterday. Mm. So now because it's a disease, we have to treat it as a disease. The, the uh, funding now has to be increased, just like funding for diabetes research, funding sure. for heart disease research, et cetera. And insurance companies are going to have to pay for dietary counseling. They're going to have to pay for exercise. They're going to have to pay for anything that goes along with that disease being taken care of. Hmm. So I think it's going to, I'm not sure how it's going to morph. I don't know how it's going to evolve, but I think that it's a good thing. And um, I'm hoping that people will start to start paying a little bit more attention to themselves. Go back a ways. Can you talk about how we got to the problem in the first place with obesity in this country? I, I really think that the problem began when we took, when we really stopped paying attention to eating at home. So many of us eat out. I think the average family eats out two or three times a week. When you do that, the preservatives, the sugar, the chemicals, all of this, I believe, contributes to the body's obesity epidemic. I also think that going back, we as a society are so incredibly stressed there is, there's tons of data on human studies and on animal studies that have shown that when you stress the body and when you stress the body and raise cortisol, what happens is the body starts to burn fuel. It needs fuel. Mm -hmm. That fuel becomes sugar. Your body starts to say, oh my goodness, we don't have enough stores. So you start eating. I was just reading a study yesterday that showed that people that are more stressed are 60 or to 70 percent more likely to eat badly because it's you know your body goes back to the caveman days and says oh my goodness I'm running around I'm stressed I gotta have to make sure that I have enough fuel to get through the next couple of days and that would be food mm. so you eat foods that are very high in sugar to, to, to store in the body mm. so what has contributed to this? I think number one, sugar. Sugar is the most addicting substance on the planet. We know that. It's more addicting than heroin, cocaine, or any other drug. We've got to start eating at home. Mom's got to start cooking. Dad's got to start cooking. And we have to stop eating out more. And I think we have to do everything we can to cut down the stress in our bodies, the stress in our lives. And we also, the other thing that contributes a tremendous amount to the obesity epidemic is that, and I've been looking at this recently with some new technology that I have, to look at the heavy metal toxicities, the heavy metal mm. concentrations in people's bodies. I have looked at over 150 people in my practice through, again, some new technology that I have, and it has shown me that every single one of those people, including myself, who I've been pretty clean for a long time, have heavy metals, lead, mercury, aluminum, nickel, in, my, in our bodies that are deadly, that block receptors, that block the function 
of so many vitamins, minerals, nutrients in this country. Women that are menopausal, perimenopausal, men who are going through andropause, you can't fix that problem unless you get rid of the minerals, unless you clean your liver, unless you clean your kidneys, and unless you clean your system. You are not going to get better. And I've been doing this again a long time, and these are the trends that I'm starting to see. Where are these metals coming from? Where aren't they coming from? You know, aluminum. Aluminum, mom used aluminum pots and pans mm -hmm. 30 years ago. Aluminum comes from the soda cans that, that people are drinking from. Aluminum comes from, it's, it's in the environment. Mercury, fillings, mm -hmm. fish, lead, fillings. I would bet that if there's 100 people watching this video, I would bet 95 of you have fillings in your mouth. That's the number one source. And I tell my patients, don't you dare start taking them out because that's going to go straight to your brain. It's going to really go into your adrenals, and you're going to have a problem. You need to deal with a natural holistic, holistic dentist. Mm -hmm.